Hey everyone, I'm Calvin Reedy. We're here today with Chloe Du Matthews discussing her new book, Caspian the Elements, and her show that's up in Aperture's Gallery through November 30th. So Chloe, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you encountered the region, because I think that's a really fascinating story, and then what made you stay to make a body of work? Mm. Well, so in 2010, I was hitchhiking with my boyfriend from China back to Britain. It took us 10 months. Um, we kind of, you know, took a tent and stayed wherever we found. And it was during that time um, that we crossed through the Caspian region. So we came into Kazakhstan and then got a container ship across the Caspian Sea okay. for um, a f- couple of days and arrived in Baku, Azerbaijan. So what was it about the region that had you returning for five years to make the work? Well, I think I was attracted by the landscape and my lack of knowledge about it. So I didn't have too much, um, too many preconceptions, which I think is quite refreshing. Um, And also I find, you know, it's that classic thing, the more you the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. And so it becomes a kind of obsession to find out more. Mm-hmm. So the more I was photographing, the more I felt that there was to talk about in the region. I ended up making the work in terms of elements, so these kind of oil, gas, fire, water, uranium, salt. And the more I was sort of expanding that, the more I felt that there was to talk about. So there's this really striking image here, and I'd love to hear about what's going on and where you are. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I shot this photograph in uh, the Turkmen Desert. It's known locally as the door to hell, Davaza. Mm. Um, it's a 70 metre wide burning gas crater, uh, which was created in 1971. Um, Soviet geologists were drilling in the area and they were hoping for oil or gas. And when they were drilling, there was this huge explosion underneath them. And they smelt the noxious gas, thought we'd better ignite it, get rid of it quickly. Um, And it's been burning ever since. And it's this extraordinary symbol of the potency um, of the natural resources in that area. So could you tell us a little bit about the relationship between the elements in the area and the identity of the region? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really fascinating to see how in this region, in some cases, people actually define themselves in terms of these elements. So, for example, oil and gas, you know, I, I was fascinated to, to spend some time in a cemetery on the Caspian coast in, in Kazakhstan. And there, because of the oil wealth, this huge oil wealth in the region, there's these very, very elaborate mausoleums that are being built. And then on the sides of these, re, uh, these uh, mausoleums, I saw etched symbols of the oil industry. Mm-hmm. So you'd get a, a um, you know, nodding donkey or a, or a gas tower. Mm-hmm. And that was actually, you know, etched into the monuments to the dead. Yeah. It, was, it was, this is the identity going forward into the future of this mm-hmm. person. This is how I'm defining that person. Um, so I found that really interesting. Um, that's one example. Yeah, that's yeah. really fascinating. Mm. Um, could you tell me how your research about the region has been meaningful in the work? Yeah, I mean, in my subsequent projects, they have been very research heavy. And I think this project, um, you know, I fir- when I first arrived in the Caspian region, I did no research at all. And I was really, really keen that I went with as an open mind as possible. And, you know, there is the, the sort of old tradition of, you know, photographers going out to a place, having researched a lot, knowing exactly what they're going to go and shoot and bringing back the story that they already knew they were going to shoot. Right. Whereas I really wanted to open my mind and, you know, allow myself to have encounters, any, any all sorts of encounters, and for me to be led in different directions. So I'm actually really curious about what you studied and how your background affects the work that you've made. Yeah, so I studied fine art at um, art college, um, installation, um, conceptual sculpture really. And so at that stage I was really interested in playing, playing with materials but also the kind of symbolic possibilities for certain materials or how we project meaning onto materials. So in that sense that has really travelled through into my documentary mm-hmm. practice. 
So I was really surprised to see in the book there's images of people actually bathing in crude oil, mm. which I'd never seen before. Mm. So could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, so in fact, when I was in Azerbaijan the first time in 2010, I came across this very, very intriguing photograph from 1936. And it's these little boys covered in a black substance um, in a little pool outside. So I saw this image, was really struck by it, and ended up, you know, and saying to someone, you know, what is, what is this? And someone said, well, it's Naftalan, it's, it's our miracle oil, um, you've got to go and see it. And so I, I made my way to the sanatorium town in, um, in Azerbaijan, where people have been bathing in crude oil uh, for centuries. And I was fascinated because from my perspective, um, you know, a Londoner, someone you know, horrified by what we're doing to our landscapes right. and environments. You know, I see crude oil as meaning certain things to me. Right. It means, you know, heavy industry, corruption, power, money. Whereas to see people bathing mm -hmm. in this substance for health and, and therapeutic purposes was mind blowing and really refreshing and a reminder that it is a, you know, it's, it's a mineral substance and actually what we humans do with these substances is what then defines them, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and causes problems. So I was interested to sort of track that history of these materials and find how people are kind of reinventing or rethinking them today. Well, Chloe, thanks so much for being here. This was really fascinating, really Thank a pleasure. You. Um, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Chloe's book is available on, through Aperture and her show runs through November 30th. Aperture.